This is a Pinball News production. Okay, shall we get going? Uh, good to see you, everybody. I'm very pleased to be at TPO. Uh, my name is Christian Stolberg. I'm one of the shareholders of Pinball Brothers, and I'm also responsible for commercials and work quite a lot with the production that we have down in Italy. Yeah, and my name is Daniel Jansson, and I'm CEO. And I'm also part of the development team, so I work a lot with uh, game development also on a daily basis. And um, basically I'm here and we are here to talk to you and uh, of course we have something to share with you, hopefully. But I'm sure you have something to share with us as well. So if you have any question at all, please interrupt uh, because we would like to have a conversation with you basically. And uh, just to start with, this is, uh, sorry, Daniel? No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, if you look at the, the, the picture or the, on the screen at the moment, the, this was one of the jobs that we started with this year. We changed our website and uh, to give a rough uh, feeling about where we would like to be, we would like to somehow share the nostalgic part, the good part from the past, and trying to bring it into the future. So, something like vintage for the future is it? Is so that's why we have chosen this kind of screen, these guys standing in front of the game hall. Um, I think we could take the next uh, picture. This is a, because there are a lot of people that does not really know how everything is hanging together regarding us. I think you are, are aware of Pinball Brothers, but we are also working, and Pinball Brothers are do, doing new themes all the time, and I think you know that we've done Queen, and we've done Alien, and now we have released ABBA. So that's new titles. And we will come back to ABBA since that's the new thing for us being here this time. But what not so many people know is that we are also behind the remakes of Funhouse. Uh, so that's also us, so that should be good to know. But that's a, we are trying to separate the, this with a certain different brand, so to say. So we have one brand that is Pinball Brothers working with, a, with a new titles, the new games. And then we have the remakes that is being done by EPC, our factory. Uh, that is located down in Italy. So if you look at the map, I, I don't know if you can see that the headquarter for Pinball Brothers is in Sweden, up in a city called Örebro. And our factory is based down in uh, Italy, in Bergamo, where we are doing the, the remakes and, uh, and the app at the moment. We are actually building Alien at the moment also, so we have plenty of a games going on and uh, to put it this way one thing that people do not talk that much about is that uh, how should I say it's, it's a challenge in this business to have a, a, a flow that is quite even it's it's a little bit like this all the time you need to do new releases all the time and when you do the new releases everybody's waiting for the games and then it becomes nothing and then a new title becomes so we have been looking into this and trying to make this as more as an even, even curve. And that's also why we try to balance between the remakes like Funhouse at the, at the moment and ABBA. So uh, we have a factory going on for full at the moment. But of course that's also leads to a problem that we uh, sometimes we, we have to wait for the game a little bit because people want their new games immediately. And we, but we're trying to get more of an even surface. And I think that's a way to act that is good for everybody because it's not good to have these kind of peaks all the time. Um, so, but going back to Daniel, would you like to fill in? Yeah, I just wanted to say that the, uh, the development team is based in, uh, in Sweden 
uh, the prototyping is taking uh, place there. But we also have a sort of a global team. So we, we actually have people in the US, uh, some of you may know that. We have guys like Kelly Masarovsky who works on animation and uh, Joe Schober for programming and, and, and others. So it's a, it's, a, it's a global effort, but it's, it's run from Sweden, you could say. Yeah, perhaps, the, I don't know if, I, it might be interesting for you that we are really a global company and all, every, every week we have ongoing discussions in every time zone, so mostly. We are selling quite a lot to Australia, which is a certain different totally different time zone, but we have a lot of conversation with Los Angeles, where we talk a lot with Disney, we could talk to Warner, we could talk to Universal, and we have our own people also in, in this, this country. So basically, we, are, we have the headquarter in Sweden, but I would say that we are working globally, and I think it works today to do that with the Teams and Zoom connections. So, but it's always important also to meet, like we do right now. Um, and, and then I just should mention, perhaps, that we have a hub also, of course, in, in North America, which is the biggest market for us, and important to have a hub there. And that's PBUSA. So that's how we are set up at the moment. Any questions regarding that? Have you heard about Funhouse? Did you know that we were doing Funhouse? <coughs> you heard about Funhouse, but you didn't know it was us. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> okay, we managed to fool you there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, you're doing a remake of Funhouse? Sorry? You're remaking Funhouse? Yes. Oh. You can buy it. Yes, uh, I remember something from the original. Originally, Pat Lawler intended to put in a mechanical clock uh, in the playfield, but was removed to cut costs, being replaced with lights. Are you considering putting that original mechanical clock idea in the game? Unfortunately, not. <laughs> but I appreciate your question. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I mean, Phanas is now what it is, and, and it's ongoing. It's, it, we got two versions, uh, don't we? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, we are in full production, so, but there will come probably new re remakes. We cannot share right now with which one it would be, but it would be new remakes. And it would be also, perhaps I should say, that the way we look at new titles is approximately we will do at least one new title every year. And I would say, I think the aim will be to do three new titles within two years. So it's a little bit faster than one title a year. And on top of that, I would say one remake. So that's the rough plan that we think. So we are, as you then understand, we are already working with the next title that would be released somewhere in March. Uh, April, which we cannot share today, but <laughs> okay. okay. Um, take next picture. Question. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you license for the new title or is it uh, on property? No, no, no. That's that's a title that we we work together with a with a with a license company. So 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 it's a it's a title you will. Yeah, it's not something that we have made up, but we we think we have a, honestly a super strong title ongoing. But you always do, but but this time we feel this would be good. I am confused. Yes. Uh, is Pinball Brothers only going to focus on license build machines, or will there also be titles based on the original concepts? Yeah. We, we will not uh, do in that case, what do you mean, we original, something that we make up ourselves. Yes, yeah. so something you know, like a generic fantasy game or something... Yeah, fantasy. no, that, that, that will not be our strategy. We will go for, honestly, very strong titles uh, and uh, global titles. Sometimes we might consider a niche title also, just to, to, to differentiate. But it would, we will not make it up our own. On the other hand, we will do the remakes. So that would be, uh, how should I say, yeah, the balance between new titles and remakes. So um, I have a question for the people. When you want to ask something, please raise your hand and I come over to you. Then you, then all the people can understand your question. 
Thank you for that. I think we've got one person yeah. there. Hi, I'm Mike. Um, there's a big range of pinball machines, and um, Fanos is not System 11. Sorry. So, I, so the question is, um, when you do remakes, it's more older pinball machines, or till till what uh, oh, date? Yeah. If it is older, if you mean if you base it, it, is it system system eleven or yes, uh, uh, your PC yeah. ninety five like. Uh, yeah, I, I, get, I get the question, it's a good one, because uh, Funhouse is obviously uh, in that breaking point between System yeah. 11 and WPC. And, uh, but um, it's, uh, we, we can't really say, but uh, um, you, you could expect uh, some WPC um, games, for sure. Okay, so you, I, I guess that's not a huge surprise, but... <laughs> yeah, another question on this side. Um, you will be also make uh, conversion kits for existing machines, or uh, have this buy this machine the twice? <laughs> also, when I have to make Twilight Zone or something in uh, new version, uh, you have also like like Bob from Dutch Pinball, uh, you have a conversion kit to an existing uh, game, or have it buy. You mean you mean it like the 2.0 kits from? Uh, from for whirlwind and funhouse before or a bright up pinball now I, right now we are focusing on games so full games yeah but it, I mean you can we uh, we are making plans uh, for a long time uh, we, we intend to stay, stay here for, for a very long time and uh, so you never know what happens but it's not in the plans right now uh, I'm a bit confused about your WEC uh, will they be made uh, as uh, extra cabinets, as conversion kits for existing cabinets, or both, as an option for you? No, it's full, full games that is uh, being planned and, and uh, considered, so, yeah. So no conversion kits? So no, okay. no, not, not right. Not for the moment. But as I said, not something, uh, it could, could happen in the future perhaps, but uh, not right now. Yeah. How do you arrange the uh, license? Because to me, pinball bottles is uh, quite new. I only knew uh, Stern Pinball, one of the big names. Uh, pinball bottles is uh, like new to me. Yeah. Uh, how do you arrange like a big license uh, like the Alien franchise? And especially with uh, two movies in the same cabinet. That seems to me like licensing hell. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very difficult. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, not impossible. I, I, I mean, it, uh, how we handle it, it, it is like, like I said, uh, it's quite fun, I think. I, I really like the situation that we are, of course, a quite small company. But when we play with license, we're playing with huge companies like Disney, Warner and stuff. And, and, and the way it, it, it goes is that we are looking for a title that we like. and. Uh, talking to them and then negotiate and then normally could be one or two titles, it could be three titles, it depends. And of course we're also looking to our on our competitor and, and competitors and we got a pre pretty tough, uh, rough picture of how they act and uh, we know there are a lot of rumors going on and since we are working behind the scenes we know that when people think they know, they don't know. So there's a lot of things that, that is quite interesting with, with this. But this is also interesting for me, for us, to know if we just... Do you have any favorite that you would like to see in a pinball game? Is there anyone who would like to give us any...? Adam's family. Adam's family, okay. I say remake or a new... Yeah? Remake, yeah. remake okay. With better sound. Yeah. Sorry? I... With better sound. Yeah. And then you would also adjust the artwork, or only? Yeah, artwork is good for me. I, I, did I answer your question? No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does the design of do you already start working on the design, for example, like Alien? Uh, before you have secured a license, or do you already have an idea of I want this and that in the cabinet? 
uh, it's fixed rate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we, that, that's also a very good question because th th this is one part of the complexity with the license. Uh, for us, we, we, we do not start with doing anything. Ah, in some sense, you, you are not totally clear. You have a contract for the license, but there's a lot of questions behind. D does, do we get the likeness from the actors? Do the actors want to take part? Could they not take part? What can we use? It could be a song in the, in, in the movie that is, belongs to someone else. Could we use that, that song or could we not? So, so it's, uh, but we, we, we do not sort of take a chance and we, we go for this and then we buy the license. We, we buy the license and then we do the, the game. I think another question about the funhouse. Uh, first, there uh, was the, 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 the kit to adjust. Uh, Sorry, the, the first there was a kit to, for the funhouse. Yeah. First, there was a kit to adjust to, to, to make your 2.0 funhouse. And then you decided to build the funhouse machine with uh, other artwork. When did that come up? I think, it, yeah. would you like to see? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I, I catch the question completely. You mean um, how the events, uh, what, what led to the full yeah. game being made? Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't want to go into details too much, but uh, uh, of course uh, you can see a sort of an evaluation path, if you like, from from doing uh, kids to full full games, but obviously we have, um, since, since People Brothers has made uh, full games uh, from the beginning, it, it wasn't that, um, it wasn't a huge step, obviously, to, uh, to uh, consider making full games for, uh, for remakes also. Yeah, but then you decided to put other artwork on the, ah, on, yeah. on the machine, so yeah. when that, that's come up, because it's it, it looks really beautiful. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah, it's a super package of yeah. uh, Brian Allen. It's, it's really gorgeous in, in my opinion. So yeah, yeah, but but I think that is. Um, uh, I think we can sort of in, in today's pinball world, uh, we people want th people want how it was before <laughs> to to a certain degree, but you also want something new, don't you? I mean, if everything stayed the same, it would be quite boring, I think. So, I, I, to me personally, I think that is the beauty of this hobby. If you look at, uh, you can take any any part of it, really. You can take something silly, not silly, but simple, <laughs> like uh, light, lighting, uh, lights in the game, the bulbs, the old ones, and then you have the LEDs coming along, and people had a furious debate about you can't put LEDs into a game because they should look like they used to look before. But LEDs are beautiful, but I also think the old ones are beautiful. And that is the thing with Farnhouse also. The classic one is beautiful, it's a great game, it looks great. But there is also a new one, and that's, I think it's pretty cool that you can make a new one that is uh, liked and, and, and accepted in, in, in a good way. I don't know if that is an answer to your question. But I, also, I also think like, Again, we are a quite small company and we are learning all the time. And, and uh, the idea is to even out the flow, to have better remakes and new titles to make it like this instead of that. that. That's the idea behind it. But this is also something that has grown along the way. So to be honest, we did, I wouldn't say a mistake, but a bad plan because we really released Funhouse at the same time as ABBA. And that is something we need to learn about. It should be more like one new title and then the remake. Now it became both at the same time. So, so what I'm trying to say is we have plans, of course, but it's also something that grows along the way that we realize that this is the way we should do it for the future. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's early as a question, but uh, you talk about license. How long do you have a license? Uh, I have an Alien Ripple edition. And I'm asking me if you get new movie sets or something inside, uh, or new code. I don't know if you still working with David Thiel for the sound. And um, how long can you can you change things for the Alien? How long is the license here? Or also for other pinballs? 
Uh, yeah, it's a, also a very good question. A lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it but, it's yeah. but all good ones. <laughs> yeah. but, but it is one of the complicated things because you don't get a license forever, but you can, of course, extend them, make them longer, so to say. So uh, we, we, don't, we don't see a stop for Alien, for example. And I don't did you mention about uh, updates coming for Queen as well? No, I haven't. We, we continuously uh, intend to update the games uh, onwards. So there are um, thoughts and plans for, for an Alien update also. So it's, uh, it's um, yeah, we, we have a lot to do. <laughs> That, 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 that is uh, not likely this year, because this year, I realize now, when we, when we talk, that it's not that long. I would, yeah. say, I would say also that um, it's not a super strong part of our strategy, but somehow I think we can see some kind of connections with Queen and Abba as a title. And Alien is, of course, a complete different title. But we're thinking a little bit in a way that what title could harmonize very well with Alien. So, so we have some kind of structure. When you produce a, a, a machine this, these days, the, the code is not... We, we, we always have code updates. We used to have when we have the Indiana Zones from Williams. They send out the machines, we never get a code update. And now, when is a pinball software finished? When? When? Yeah, it's never finished. No, I think. <laughs> because, uh, but, but of course, there, there are a few different things to that. Uh, when you plan a game, you obviously have a scope for the game. And uh, if we take ABBA, that we are going to talk a little bit more about in a few minutes, I think, uh, you, you can see it this way, that we are, we are making a new um, we are planning a new update, quite a big one, for before Christmas, um, which isn't far away. <laughs> but uh, uh, after that update, I would say that all the sort of the, the entire scope that was planned for the game is in the game. But that doesn't mean that the updates will stop. We will continue to make updates. There are there are tweaks, there are bug fixes, there are good ideas coming up. So we always want feedback from everybody what you want to see in the game. We can't guarantee that we can add everything in the games that everybody wants, of course, but we consider everything. And uh, I think that um, as long as um, it makes sense to, uh, to make updates, we will continue to do it. I, I would also say, say like, uh, I, I use this phrase, uh, vintage for the future. I mean, the old way to do it was that you did the game and then it, that was it. It was a mechanical solution and then you're ready. I think everybody realized with new technique it's not the same way. So I think uh, that's what we mean with taking something into the future. Of course, at a certain level, something is almost done, but we could still update. We could still put in new things in the machine. Yeah. Should, should we move on? Yeah, I, I think I think we we're running out of time. So we uh, very short question. Uh, speaking of Queen, I heard it was supposed to be a wide body machine, but it became standard size uh, when released. How oh, come? Because we wanted to do a standard. <laughs> <laughs> it's the simple answer. So in other words, to cut costs. No, it wasn't. What to, was it? No, it wasn't. To be honest with you, uh, we would have saved costs to stay with the white body, if that makes sense. If, if you think about it, it doesn't make sense to change the body of the game. It, 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 you get a lot of extra cost, actually. So I, I think that is... Um, but, but I do understand that those kind of uh, thoughts comes up, because it, 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 um, it's quite easy to think so. It's, uh, yeah, it, no, it, it was nothing about that. So it, it was more about getting a good Make a good game. It's always about making a good game. Of course, you have to look at cost. I w it would be silly to s be standing here and say that it doesn't matter what the game costs to produce, because it does. But we want to make good games with a lot of stuff in them. And, and uh, we, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the bottom line, I think.
Okay, should we then go into ABBA? Uh, we can leave this picture on for it. I just, I just, I just want to say... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I, I, I blew, we we can have this, that, that's fine. I, I blew the whole I, 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 uh, I think everybody knows ABBA and it's a quite iconic uh, band that I, I would say one of the biggest bands from the 70s. And uh, of course, there's a lot of exciting things behind the scenes also regarding ABBA. And uh, we have, uh, of course, are in contact with the band quite frequently. And especially uh, one thing is that it was, in this case, not us approaching them. It was actually them approaching us. So everything starts. I don't know if you could just say very short how that happened. Yeah, it was actually uh, Ludwig Andersson, the son of Benny Andersson in ABBA, who uh, he called me, basically, and uh, asked uh, if we could do a pinball machine based on ABBA, because he thought that ABBA should have a pinball machine. And I think everybody agrees to that, and we agree to that. And that's why we have a pinball machine based on ABBA today. So it's, that's the short story. Uh, and also that Ludwig was also taking part of the development of the machine yeah, to exactly. some extent. Um, yeah, with that being said, um, we could also, this is a picture coming from one of the versions that we will talk a little bit about, but uh, the artwork, perhaps we should say something about that. I think, I think it was a request actually from Ludwig and he yeah. wanted something. Yeah, he wanted something. He uh, guided us to an, a Swedish artist uh, named Andreas Benvik, a great artist. And he, um, he uh, got the assignment, basically, to do a, a, a very ABBA-like artwork. Uh, and uh, that is, um, is it correct to say minimalistic? Yeah, to some extent. I, I think this is also something that, how should, how should I say, we needed to be quite brave in this because everybody knows about uh, pinball. It's a lot of details and there's a lot of yeah, things happening. And Appa has this other approach that it should be, how should I say, quite clean the picture and very, very, the logo should be very uh, easy to recognize and not too much things around. And, and you know that there are a lot of. Uh, producers uh, that especially focus on having a lot of details in artworks. So, so that was one thing that was a little bit challenging for us and we didn't know really how would the market react but so far we feel it, it has gone well but it was something that I, I think was a little bit challenging for the pinball industry. Yeah. But ABBA is extremely happy, I can tell you. <laughs> they are super happy. They are playing the game uh, and also the, um, on a daily basis, I should say. And, and uh, also the uh, record company, Tvar Music and Universal, they also have games and they, they uh, love them. So that's, that's great. Um, and here is the... The full, full game, obviously. You have seen it, so it's... Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen Arba themselves play the machine. You haven't? Do it? We have we to don't ask for that. But, but this is the limited version. Yeah. So, so, so this is the, the one we call Arrival. I think we can move on quite. Yeah. And, but then the, the big story really is, is, you know, I don't know if you're aware of Abba Voyage Arena in London. It's a huge... ABBA is quite special in that sense also that they do not share that much and do not very often do things like similar things like pinball machines. They have done, of course, ABBA the movie and they made also Mamma Mia, I think, the theater. So they've done things and it'd be very successful, but they do not often do things like this. So that's a quite extraordinary thing then. They did the Voyage Arena, I think everybody was doubtful, will that really fly? And, and I think, I don't know how many years they have been running Voyage Arena. Uh, I think it's three, this is the third year, and they, I think they planned for one year in the beginning, but they, they, it's been playing for full houses all the time. And one big part of the Voyage Arena is that they spend quite a lot of money to invest in, in, in the artwork uh, for Voyage. 
and there's a special story behind the game, uh, uh, which is that the lead person is the Shinola from, from Voyage. So that is one thing that I think we are exclusive in the world, except for Voyage Arena, it's only us that are allowed to work with that uh, animation that is a part of also our game. So it's also a very big part, major part of our story in the game. And, and that is also something that I forgot to, rem uh, to, to, rem uh, to tell you about. And that is that we are also trying to fo focus not only having a game and trying to win some points. We would like to have a good story, how you get those points. And, and Daniel will go into that. But the big thing right now is that we are allowed to use this as the only exclusive, I would say, in the world, except for Voice Arena. And that's also one reason behind why we have a differentiation between the next game that comes now, the Voyage game, which we, we is another license that we need to have to be able to work with the Voyage. So this is our collector edition, which is a different approach, of course. Questions on that? We can change to this one, I guess, because here you have both the games um, side by side, and they are pretty uh, different from each other. I guess you you uh, agree to that. And also, I think you already said. See, I mean, we have both games out on the, so you should play it before you leave. I think we I think we take the next. Are the games? Uh, mechanically the same, I guess, all right? Yes. The artwork is yes. Is the artwork that differs, yeah. 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 I think this is your <laughs> table. My section. <laughs> okay. Prepare for two hours. No. We shouldn't do this too long. Uh, but I wanted to share with you um, a bit an overview of the rules in the game and, the, and as Christian touched on, I think, the, the story because uh, a music pin to, is a music pin, most people say and uh, to some degree that is also true for ABBA, of course Yeah, yeah. We, we actually have uh, this um, the rules flowchart, if you if you want it, we can we share it with you on a pretty nice printed paper. Christian will hand them out. In the meantime, I can tell you that if you start in that um, in that end of it, you you can say that ABBA contains um, 19 songs when you start the game. You have 19 songs to choose from of their iconic uh, catalog, and those. Uh, songs are background songs, you can say. They have no rules attached to them. So, so when you go up to the game, and you, you hit the start button and you launch the ball, you can, you can choose any song you, you feel like. It doesn't really matter for the scores or strategy or anything. Uh, there, is, there is more than 20 songs in total in the games. So there are a few songs that are uh, tied to um, certain parts of the game and those you can't use as background songs. Uh, on top of that, you have um, five, five song modes in the game. We have sort of focused on five songs that, are, that we have built uh, rules, rules around. And those are Ring Ring, Mamma Mia, Dancing Queen, Money 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 and SOS. And uh, just to go into uh, pinball rules details, we, um, you uh, shoot the drop, song drop targets to the left, lower left in the game, and then you light up the scoop, the song scoop, which is uh, located just uh, below the helicopter. And then you, uh, when you shoot the scoop, you start one of the song modes, basically. And uh, when you have played uh, all the song modes, you qualify for the mini wizard mode called Voyage. And in that mini wizard mode, the song on and on and on is used, and that is not... You can't hear that song anywhere else in the game. 
So that is the sort of uh, song part of the game, I could say. So if you move on to the next one. But uh, Christian touched a little bit from the Voyage Arena and the story there. And actually, Shinola, the company behind the animated movies, they are part of the show in London. Uh, they, based, they made a story in, in two movies about a character called Rora, who is on a quest, if you like, and she finds an ancient medallion. And uh, we have chosen to call that medallion the Medallion of Power. And we have sort of used that story and brought it into, into the ABBA game. And, uh, and the big task, the sort of um, the end goal of the game is to piece this medallion of power together uh, in the game and uh, that will lead you to the final wizard mode of the game and the end, end goal of the game is to make ABBA into uh, immortal avatars. So when you play the game your goal is to make ABBA immortal. So it's just a tiny little task to do that. Um, you, do, you, you get the pieces of the medallion by completing four main tasks in the game. And each and every one of these tasks leads up to a challenge, which we call medallion challenge. And I will, I will touch on that very briefly in the next picture. But just to give you an idea, the, the main tasks are collecting all the band members you have to collect all the outfits. ABBA was very famous for all the outfits they have back in the day. And uh, you have to collect all those famous outfits. Uh, you also have to collect their instruments. And finally, you have to revisit all the tours they did back in the day. They did six big tours. And they, um, you are playing them in chronological order. So you, you play them in Sweden the Nordic countries, Europe, and the US, Australia, and Japan. And uh, once you have uh, completed all these tasks, you have collected uh, all the pieces of the medallion. And after that, or not after that, you can do it uh, in parallel, but you also have the, to play the three multiples in the game. And that is the Waterloo multiple, the Super Trooper multiple, and the Arrival multiple. And the Arrival multiple is the one where you lock the balls into the helicopter. So that is, um, um, that is the goal of that. Questions? Easy to follow? Problems. Problems. How do you make up uh, the rules for the complete game? So I'm not the, like the best player in the world, and it's very difficult for me to complete all the tasks. Uh, so, yeah, how do you envision that uh, the average player will complete the game? It's a very good question. It's very hard to make a game that that works for everybody. Of course, you have different settings in the game, so you can make it easier and harder. That is one way of doing it. You can do it both physically, of course, you can make some adjustments to posts and stuff like that for the outlines, for instance. But also in the in the software, you can make it easier. You you um, like in all pinball machines, I would say. For um, uh, when you collect band members, for instance, you you can if you put it on uh, super hard, you have to make six shots to complete the band member. If you put it very easy, you can you can start on the fourth step, so you can just you just have to make two shots to, to complete the band member. So th there are things to do. There, there's also another thing which which I think um, has been done for some games also in the past. You we are we are actually planning for having a start menu where you can where you potentially could play the wizard mode standalone if you want to, to experience it, if you have bought the game, you want to see it, you want to play it, but it's really hard to get there. I, I, I do understand that. So, um, yeah, when you have played all the multiples, you have uh, powered the medallion up, and um, you can move on. 
move on. Yeah. But before just uh, touching on the final whistle mode, I just want to revisit the uh, um, medallion challenges, which are a pretty big uh, happening in the game. When you complete one of those main tasks, you you will um, be, you will qualify to start the medallion challenge. And believe me, you will not you will not miss when it's uh, when it's available to start. Uh, and each and every one of these challenges are based on a different part of that uh, uh, animated movie in uh, the Abba Voyage Arena. And that is why we have given them names even. So the challenges are called uh, Dragon Walk, uh, Water Skip, uh, Flower Jump and Forest Run. So that is the, the, the challenges to, to complete. And they have different rule sets and they are made up in a... Yeah, they, they have a challenge of their own, I would say. Yeah, and, and just uh, to give you a glimpse of uh, the final whistle mode and game, which is also based on the, on the second of those animated movies in, in, at Voyage. So uh, that's where you finally release the power of the medallion and uh, make ABBA immortal. So, I, I think the main conclusion of this and, and why we describe this to you is to just give you an idea that ABBA is obviously a beautiful and great music pin, but it's also something else. And if you want to, to uh, take that path when you play the game, that is that is up to you. You can just step up to the game, play a couple of ABBA songs, have a good time, and that's it. But if you want to make a deep dive and, and have you, you sort of want a quest to complete, there is one for you in the game. That, that's the bottom line. Okay, I see we've got 10 minutes left. Uh, do we have any questions from that you would like to ask? I have one final thing from from us. Yeah, could you? Um, well, as much as I love Abba's music, uh, I know it's like you said, it's, it's music from 40, 50 years ago. Is it a business wise risk to produce a game like this for a limited audience? It is, of course. And, and, but, but like I said, we we are going. I mean. I think everybody agrees upon that this is a big theme, it's, it's a huge theme to one extent, but it is a little bit like, how should I say, tempting, uh, trying to see if the pinball industry is ready for it. And there are some challenges, and, but we would like also to be a little bit challenging. We don't, I mean, we have nothing, there's nothing for us to be here to be like everybody else. We would like to be different. We would like to make a difference. And to make a difference, you need to be different. You need to take some chances. And that's what we have done with ABBA. And I, I, I think, honestly, when we look back to this, I think we will be even more proud of that we really dared to do it. And I also think one thing that we are very happy with with ABBA is it has nothing to do with the theme but it feels like it's a really reliable machine. It works very well. So, so I don't know. It, it, you're, I, that's also why I mentioned it. It, it is a challenge, but uh, we are ready to do that from time to time. But we will also go over this more. We can also read the internet and what everybody wants. So, you understand? Is, is it answered? Yeah, okay. Anything else? Um, is there anything from the organizers? Or? Yeah. No? All questions answered. Yeah, all questions yeah. answered. So. Yeah. Uh, then I have a final thing. Um, well, when we play the game more often, then the questions will come more. Uh, yeah. I say the time only twice in the morning. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we really would like to talk to you and listen to your ideas and, and uh, we would lo love, I mean we are a small company but we will focus on big in building up the community because I think that's, that's honestly one of the 
big part for why I joined this company, is I think we need to build up a community. And I think the community also have some kind of responsibility to act, to behave honestly, because it's a lot of bashing and, and everybody's telling that that was bad and that was bad. And, and I, I would like to be more like, a pre we, we love like uh, JJP and Stern and everybody else. We, we, we don't benefit anything from hearing that someone has done some, something bad. So I think we should try to work together with everybody, trying to make this business as cool as it should be and not as blaming as it is sometimes. So, I, so we would very much like to talk to you and sometimes fulfill your ideas and dreams, but sometimes we will go our own way, like with ABBA perhaps. Maybe one question. Thanks for the presentation. Um, you talked about niche, and as far as I know, uh, B52 is a pinball, which a uh, B52 is a bin in America, which is very famous. And uh, I would love to see that such kind of band. Is that possible? Is that um, like what team? I did. I did B52. 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 Yeah. B52. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, that, that, that's an even, uh, yeah, 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 that's, that's a really... It's quite familiar, popular, and they have a lot of... Yeah, music. yeah. I would love to see a pinball like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, that's a really also a, a big challenge, even a bigger challenge, I would say, than ABBA, because, right. because I, I think, I don't know how many remember B52. For it. Yeah. I, I think, I think we need to consider like this, uh, there are some s smaller, and, and sometimes, you know, we are not into this to do thousands of games. If we could do a couple of hundreds, that could be enough, so it might be possible. It's not on the table as it is now, but I like the idea, because I almost forgotten B-52. I, I know exactly what band it is. Okay, well, I'll next year, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I think we should have an April Fool's exclusive mode, where the Love Shack song gets replaced with Love Slap. Yeah. Love Slap, shut your beard. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Well, I think it was one question here, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, have you, you, you said you looked at the internet to see what people like and what uh, what the direction is. But I guess your your team also consists of uh, I don't know how many people. I assume uh, fifteen or something. I don't know. Maybe you can tell how big your team is. But with that team, you know as a team what you want, and if you make that, you will always make something that hopefully fits the audience. Uh, but it will make your own thing, right? Yeah, it, it, I think I got your question. It's very important for us that everybody who works on something likes what they are doing and are really sort of um, invested in it, if that makes sense. So it's, uh, it's very important for us. Even if we listen to the market, obviously, we also have to be dedicated to what, what we do. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, sorry some, I... sometimes these things align, and sometimes they, they are align less. So, but yeah. yeah, yeah, I hope I didn't give that impression. I'm not meaning that I should, we should talk to you and then jump, whatever you say. So, we need to have also a, a clear view of what we would like to do. What I meant more was that. I, I, I see in front of me that we could develop things together, that you have ideas that we didn't think about, and some characters in the thing. I don't know, I don't know how, but we, I, I'm just sort of giving my hand. If you would like to take it, take it, uh, and, and we would love that. Yes, regarding what he said, um, he just said, I am um, and what you said earlier, I. Before this, I thought it was really great that you did ABBA, and I thought it was because you're from Sweden. But apparently, ABBA asked you, and uh, it wasn't like you had the idea that there had have to be an ABBA machine. So, uh, um, if you look at all of, all the different te themes of pinball machines, um, uh, they are all mostly American. So uh, I was wondering if uh, if it wouldn't be a really nice idea not to go to Warner Brothers or, and Disney only, but maybe to look for something more European or even Scandinavian uh, or, or Canadian, like Nirvana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good. I mean, we like I said, we are doing that as well. I think we need to do both somehow. But but we need we need. You're right. I think we need to be different. 
I think that's what you're saying. It also come with, we cannot come with the same thing as Stern do or something. I mean, then, then they could buy Stern. Why should they buy us? So, so we need to do something different. Thank you I very much. I think there was one question over there as well. Last question. You said before, I give you my hand. Uh, I got some ideas maybe, but maybe it's not for in this room. Maybe uh, just come by my stand. Same for me. I'm, uh, I'm having a bit more coffee tables. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen them, but just come by and then we can share some thoughts. I would love to. We will, uh, I will definitely. We will come. Of course. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about cocktail tables. Sorry, I, I, sorry. We, we, we got a new uh, seminar within, I think, yeah. two minutes. Uh, I just would like to end this. It's been super fun and I really love that you came here. I, I just have one question, we cannot take it here. Uh, but is, if any one of you wants, I, I, I cannot promise that everybody gets a t-shirt, but if you want a t-shirt, please come, let's say, outside here and then, and then uh, we, we, we try to sort that out. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.